haven't really felt led to do a video, um, having a lousy kind of day, uh, just, uh, need to testify about the grace of God, you know, I found out that my Excel spreadsheet didn't update my expenses to what I paid other musicians this month, so it looked like I made a thousand dollars more than I actually did, and if I'd have realized that, I would have had a very different kind of month, and I'm feeling a little, like, condemned, not, you know, yeah, uh, about that, and then the enemy tried to haunt me with some fears over sins that were committed way in the past, way in the past, but like, I didn't have the kind of Christian life where you go, oh, that's a good Christian, no, I had the kind where you go, oh, God, what's going to happen to him, <laughs> and uh, if I hadn't taken that route, I probably wouldn't know the grace of God the way I can articulate it today, you know, because I've had to preach the gospel to myself so many times, uh, but, you know, the enemy wants to attack our confidence. The theme of my channel is we need to be confident and we need to keep hold of that message which we heard from the beginning in order to abide in the Father and in the Son. And it is the simple gospel that Jesus Christ came and died for sins, our sins. And they were real sins. They weren't imaginary sins or general sins. They were very specific sins. And they weren't just corporate sins. They were individual sins. They're the sins you committed. Jesus Christ died for the sins that I committed. The ones that the law condemns me about to the uttermost. He actually paid a real price for it. We would say, well, I was just forgiven. We got off scot-free. No, no, I was condemned. And then he paid the price. And yes, I was forgiven in God's eyes. But, you know, sometimes we're afraid to go to the depths of really what we are. And because we're afraid, you know, well, if I'm that bad, you know. It was one thing to say he forgave my sins. And I said, yeah, I forgive my, you know, I, I'm forgiven. Well, I kept it all general and light. But if I'm actually found out to be a sinner you know, that I really did something bad, well, there's no covering for that. <laughs> That's kind of our concept religiously, you know. No, he died because of real sins. Real sins. All the ones that the law condemns. Covetousness, murder, thievery, adultery, idolatry, blasphemy, disobedience to parents. All of it. A guilty of it all. And I can look back at real instances. The only one maybe not is murder, but I've sure hated a lot of people in my heart, which he says is the same thing. And I'm not saying this in a formulaic way. I can really look back and see where I am guilty. And I can look at specific instances, and they're not just like, oops. You know, <laughs> I live in a place in the county where people think sin means that you didn't throw your Starbucks uh, container in the right bucket you put it in a recycle instead of trash you know or you didn't smile to the cashier everybody's got a veneer out here and uh, no one's a real sinner well I'm a real sinner I really am and it's, there's things that haunt me from my past that come up and say there's just no way you can be qualified there's no way and it's amazing how, no matter how much you know grace, you still have to fight the fight every day. It, Like I've said in the past, we don't learn a spiritual lesson in our flesh. Every day we have to lay hold of him. And today, you know, we just need to declare, this is the Passover. So what does that mean? That there was a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world for my sins. And he, through his death, blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against me and accused me. And he, he blotted it out, taking it out of the way. And he paid the real price for my sins. And he crucified me with him on that cross. So it's not like justice wasn't served. Justice was really served. And yet he tasted it for me. And for that, I'm grateful. 
And today, I have boldness and confidence to approach the throne of grace to find mercy, find grace and receive mercy, receive grace and find mercy in my time of need. And you know, that throne is the same throne we're going to stand before when at, our, at the day of our, you know, seeing him and the same boldness we have today to declare the law has no hold on me. I cannot be condemned. I have been justified in the name of Jesus Christ. I am in the righteousness of Christ, and he is my righteousness. That boldness with which I can say that today is the boldness with which I can stand in front of him tomorrow, at the day of the rapture, at the day of the judgment seat of Christ, whatever that actually looks like. We need to have confidence in that day. And the only way we can have confidence is never in our own righteousness, but in his finished work. We have been sanctified by his offering and we have been forever perfected by his offering and we have been crucified with him, forgiven, cleansed, transferred out of the kingdom of darkness, brought into the kingdom of the beloved son, qualified to partake of the inheritance with the saints in the light, destined for glory, given the Holy Spirit, of the promise, blessed with faithful Abraham, saved from wrath, saved from accusation, saved from condemnation, saved from every form of negative thing that could come to us from God, and saved into every blessing in the heavenlies which is in Christ, and even saved into an inheritance which enthrones us for the ages to come. So God can shower the riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ. That's where we are. That's what we have. We just need to declare it. We need to declare it. We need to declare it to ourselves. And you know what? If you're not a saved person and you have no idea what I'm talking about, or you're not a saved person and you think that sounds pretty good, or you are saved but don't know you're saved, or you don't know what saved means, you just need to believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead after he died on the cross for your sins. There is no work that you could do to make yourself righteous enough to stand before a holy God. And those of us who know God are in no way better than those who don't. The only difference is that we have seen the truth about this, what happened on this special day 2,000 years ago, that God gave his only begotten son to die for our sins, real sins, so that we could be raised together with him in the age to come and so that we could know him in this age. He gave us his own life. To reject that life is the only sin left that will condemn you. No other sin will condemn you. You can be gay, straight, a, a raging alcoholic, a wife beater, murderer, thief, all of it. And you may say, God would have nothing to do with me. And yet Jesus was stripped naked and was crucified, a painful death between thieves and mocked by everyone and considered a curse of God it was assumed that he'd been cursed by God while he was on that cross, that he'd been, that God had turned away from him and rejected him. And while he was there, he put himself there deliberately. He took on literally your sins, every single one of them, and tasted all the death and condemnation that was rightfully due to each one of us. But he never wanted us to taste. So he tasted it for us. Now the only thing remaining the only sin that remains is rejecting his sacrifice, mocking at God and saying, no, I don't want any part of that. I'm fine by myself. What else can he do to you? What else can he do for you? He gave you his only begotten son. He gave you his own life. He became a man and went through sweat, agony, tears, pain, torment, and aloneness that you can't even understand. You can't even understand the depth of his suffering for you. And for you to reject it, there's nothing left he has to give you. And uh, 
But the good news is that the only way for you to enter in is to just receive and believe it. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to stop anything. You just open yourself up to him. Like the thief on the cross that hung next to him. Two thieves hung next to Jesus. One mocked him and said, if you're the son of God, come down from there, you know, save yourself. Save us too while you're at it. The other one said, no, we deserve to be here. This is a holy man. And he turns to him and says, you know, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus just looked at him and said, today you'll be with me in, the par in paradise. And that proves that, you know, that's, that man could not have cleaned up his life, could not have stopped anything. He was a criminal and he was accused and he was justly being put to death and knew it. And yet he knew that there was hope in Christ because somehow God opened his eyes to see who this was suffering next to him. And it's the same thing. Jesus is there suffering next to you. And every person who goes to judgment without Christ, it's terrifyingly sad because Christ was standing right next to him, bearing the judgment, hanging on the cross with them, next to them, bearing their judgment. He already bore your sins. He already provided you with forgiveness and everything you need to be reconciled to God and have an inheritance with him and be a son of God and a child of the king and and to know him for eternity. He's already taken it. Why would you take it? He's taken that. Instead of you going and taking that judgment, you need to let go of that judgment and take lay hold of the inheritance God has for you. You say, I can't. I am such a wicked sinner. You have no idea what I've done. Jesus does. And he tasted the death for real sins. He tasted it. We, I can't imagine how he did it. It was supernatural. But it, the only thing we ever saw scare him to death, you know, he sweat blood in Gethsemane the night before he was crucified, knowing what was ahead of him and saying, Father, if there's any way, can you take this cup away from me? Because he knew what he was about to go through. And he knew he was going to have to bear what none of us could bear. He didn't just bear one person's sin. He bore all of our sins. Only the Son of God could do that. And this is the display of the heart of God. You want to know what God is like? Look at Jesus on the cross. That is God hanging naked, mocked, beaten, spit upon. He didn't even look human anymore. He'd been beaten so hard by the Romans and the Jews, uh, religious leaders, uh, you know, he, there was nothing left. And then he was crucified and died an agonizing and humiliating death. And that's the heart of God. God opened up his heart and put it in the most vulnerable place and suffered everything man and Satan could do and took it for you and me so that we could be part. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he loves you. Even though you, let's say you say, I hated God all my life. I've been an enemy of God all my life. And I've lived deliberately in a way to uh, curse God. And every sin I've committed, I've done knowing would hurt God. I hate him that much. And yet he says, I reconcile my enemies to myself. All you have to do is let go of that wrath. Let go of that condemnation. Let go of that anger. And embrace him, believe, like the thief on the cross who said, remember me. That's the only thing that's required. Lord, remember me. There's nothing more that's required. Just turn to him and open up to him and you'll be born of him. Because he said, he who believes that Jesus is the son of God is born of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. The only condemnation exists is for those who will not believe because they reject. Reject that God would do something so foolish. That God would be so... The, they call him the weakling. You know, that God would pro, come into weakness like that. No, God has to be powerful. And uh, so they reject him in favor of a satanic kind of God, you know, who doesn't care about you a bit. <laughs> But we've embraced a tender-hearted, compassionate, merciful God who has suspended his judgment so that he could get as many of us in as possible. He should have judged this place a long time ago. Now it's all coming to a head. But to be saved today, 
To become a son of God, all you have to do is believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth that he is Lord. And then go read the book of John and see how good he really is. Because he will speak to you in that book. He'll speak to you in the Gospels. Open up the Bible and read and let him speak to you. Because his word is living. He is alive today for you and will comfort you no matter how bad you've been. Like I said, you don't have to turn from anything. You just need to turn to him and then let him do the work in your life. Ah, it won't be perfect, but he will comfort you through it all. And then he will glorify you with himself when he comes. Take care.